In today's video, we're going to talk about uh, what's a key fob? Do you know what fob means? F O B. Do you know what it really stands for? Is it an acronym or is it not an acronym for a remote um, or whatever you want to call it? Well, we'll talk about that today uh, and show you a few things you can do with your C8 that you might already know but you might not know. Secondly, we're going to talk about um, how do you tune a C8 Corvette? Can you tune a C8 Corvette? Why am I not? And what's... I'll tell you a little more about that when we get to that. Um, and then um, dash cam. How do you make your Corvette into a dash cam? And I'll show you how I do it on my car. So we'll talk about that. And uh, finally, we'll talk about wheel weights. I had a flat tire in my car. Took it to the dealer, put the wheel weights on. They're a totally different color than the wheel weights on the rest of the car. I'm going to ask your opinion. Do you think I have a gripe or don't I? So we'll talk about that a little later. So let's get on with it uh, right now. And we're we'll going to talk about um, first thing we're going to take a look at today is a key fob, F O B. And I'm going to put up on the screen um, the information I found out on the internet about a key fob, which I think is kind of interesting. It goes all the way back to 1653, uh, and a fob was a small pocket of valuables, but by the late 1800s and the early 1900s, a fob had a dual meaning as the pocket used for a pocket watch, and as well as hanging a little ornaments. Back in the uh, mid-1900s, a fob was an uh, an ornament that hangs on a keychain. Uh, when automobiles were sold, some of the dealers would put a little ornament on with the keys. And I can still remember, I can almost remember that day when my father handed me the keys to the family automobile, and I think I was 17, 16, 17 years old, and uh, how exciting that was to get my hands on four wheels and an engine and drive around and go all over the place. That was a great, very, very exciting day. Anyway, so then uh, sometime during the early 1980s, when remote keyless entry systems started to gain popularity, new and used car dealers started to call a remote transmitter a FOB. And the term FOB uh, remains pretty much today, they call it a FOB. Uh, but a common misconception is that FOB is an acronym because FOB stands for a free on board. That acronym was used, was used in commerce to mean that goods don't have to be paid for at the time of shipment. However, the term is only coincidentally similar. So key, a FOB really isn't a FOB. And if you, you, get, you get a gold star today if you knew that FOB meant free on board. That's pretty good because most people have no idea. That's a great trivia question. So anyway, and there's a few uh, down below that talks about um, some of the different names. If I look at the owner's manual here in the, uh, in the Corvette, they call it, I was kind of curious to see what, what they call it here, and they, the, uh, they call this a RKE in parentheses, capital R, capital K, capital E, remote keyless entry. So I think that sort of explains it pretty well, a remote, but who calls it an RKE? A reek? I got my reeky? How, how would you pronounce that even? It's kind of crazy. So anyway, uh, let's go out and do some things with the fob and show you a few of the things that work with this car, which is kind of fun. This is the key fob. Lock the door, open the door, open the front trunk, open the rear trunk, scream for help, <laughs> double tap, remote start, single tap, remote stop. Pretty easy. So let's go over here. And the first thing I want to show you is this is a, uh, it's a little, there's a little uh, button here. If I push that button, if 
can get this right. Uh, push the button, and this comes out. It looks like a key, and it is a key. And what you have to do is if you take this rear plate off, put the key in here and turn it, and get in the trunk, or the front. So, if you look in the trunk, you see the engine and some storage space, but uh, let's say you had a dead battery, you can't get to the battery, because the battery's in the front, which is the trunk up in the front of the car. Do you follow that? <laughs> it's a little confusing. All right, this key also works right here, so it will open the front door. But you're saying, I still haven't got in the front trunk, that's where I want to get, because that's where the battery is. Well, the trick is this, once you get in here, and you go down where the pedals are, you'll see a ring, a small ring, a uh, silver ring, it looks about the size of a silver dollar, maybe a half a dollar, and you pull that, and that'll open that front trunk. Now when you get the front trunk frunk open, frunk trunk, whatever the hell it is, uh, pull this piece off here, pull this piece off of here, pull this piece off here, the battery's right there, you can charge your battery. Now if you're home and you have a charger, which you should have, you can plug it in right here and keep the battery strong. Now about this car, it has a lot of electronics on it. And because it has a lot of electronics, the battery will drain down quicker. So be careful. You don't want to have a dead battery. Two weeks, if you go more than 12 days, two weeks, 10 days, two weeks, I put the charger in here and make sure you, your battery is up to snuff. Okay, I got the remote in the hand. We're going to do some remote start. Very simple. Button here on the key fob. I'm going to push it twice. Notice that when the car started, the mirrors folded in. And so when the mirrors fold in, that means you've got the car locked too. That's my tip off to me, that I've got the car locked. Now what that means is if somebody runs around the corner here and goes to jump in the car, the car's gonna be locked. Now if I put the key fob all the way back here, and I go all the way back down here, to open the door. I can't open the door. It's locked. Beautiful. So, even though you start your car remotely, somebody can't jump in the car and drive it away. Let's say we could get in the car. If you're within three feet, with this key fob, you can get in the car. I'm close to the car. I can open the car. Uh -huh -huh. So I'm going to give my wife the key fob and I'm going to get in here. But guess what? I can't put it in drive. There's no electronics on the dash. There's nothing. Come around here. You can see it. So what are we looking at here? A black screen. The car's running. Can I put it in reverse, drive, pack? No, I can't. I can't do anything. So you might be saying, well, that's stupid. Why have remote start if you can't remotely run the car? So Patty, give me, my, give me my key fob back. Now, if I put the key fob inside the car, I can put my foot on the brake and hit the starter button. Now, let me say that again. I can foot, put my foot on the brake and hit the starter button. This sounds insane, but it works. Watch this. Now, it comes alive. Radio comes on and everything. Now, if I put it in 
reverse, it goes into reverse. If I put it in drive, it goes into drive so you can drive the car. Now I'd like to show you how to turn your Corvette um, PDR into a dash cam. And uh, let's go over to the dash. I'm in the car. I have my key fob with me, but I'm going to put the car in accessory mode. You know, there are some people that don't even know how to put the car in accessory mode. They do everything on the when the car is running, but uh, let's put it in accessory mode and we'll save uh, running the car and save a little gas. Um, you don't put your foot on anything. You know, normally you get in the car, you put your foot on the brake and push your starter button. This time you take your foot off the brake, just keep your feet on the floor. Don't put them on any pedals at all. Take the starter button and hold it down for about five seconds. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. How about that? So now, oh, look what that says right there. See in the bottom, it says PDR is recording audio and video. Did you see that? I have my car set up to record audio and video, and they use the front cameras. They don't use, see this camera up here, this one rear view mirror? Why don't they include that? Wouldn't that be a great idea, GM? Wouldn't that be a wonderful idea? So that you would take both the rear view mirror and the front camera and have it all on the video. So you could cover, you know, if somebody hits you in the back end, what good is the video you got up front? It's useless. So I'm just saying. And uh, Jim, I'd love, I'd love to see you do that. That would be great if you do that. I think you'd make a lot of people happy. Anyway, uh, how, do, how have I got my settings? Well, I'm going to show you. Uh, my settings are very simple. I go into PDR, all right, and it says audio recording. Let me look at this. I'm going to turn that off. It says audio recording. You don't have to have audio recording on. I like to put it on. I want to hear all the horrible things I say if somebody smashes into me. I don't know. <laughs> now it says automatic recording on, okay, and this usually this this defaults to off when you get it there's no automatic recording. So you want to put this on, all right? And then when we go back, you have it all set. Automatic recording is on. Oops. <laughs> automatic recording is on. Let me see. What did I do there? Let me go back. Automatic recording is on. And you can decide what kind of quality you want. Do you want the low or do you want the high quality? I, I do the 1080p. Get a nice... Uh, memory card get 128 256 megabyte memory card so if you do that it's going to record approximately the last three hours of your driving two hours three hours so you always and somebody asked me this question they said well what happens when you run out of space on the memory card it starts recording over the oldest stuff that's still on the memory card so it's just like in a loop you know what i mean and so you'll always have the last two or three hours of your driving on tape from the front camera. So that's all you have to do. Make sure that automatic recording is on. And I would go to the high quality 1080p. And I'd eat, mm, that's up to you if you want to leave the, uh, if you want to leave the audio recording on or not. That's, that's a personal choice. You're all set. Now, every time you start up this car, the camera is rolling. So the key fob is pretty much self-explanatory. It tells you everything you need to know. But it's one other thing I'd like to show you that's kind of cool. Is if you hit the unlock button and hold it down. Pat, come on over this way. You can see the, the uh, side of the windows here. So if they take this and I, and I could be quite a ways away and do this. I take the button once, twice, and I hold it down for three seconds. The windows go down automatically. Isn't that cool? So if it's a nice day uh, and uh, or if it's really cloudy or whatever the deal is, then uh, you wanna you wanna make sure you use that and it keeps the car a little bit cool for you. If that's what you wanna do. So I had a flat tire last week. The nail was right about here, right about there. Told they couldn't fix it, couldn't plug it. You know, unlawful to do that. So, 
500 plus dollars later, I got a new tire. But look at this. Now, I could be wrong. I could just be a whiny old pain in the ass. But look at this. Look at these wheel weights. See all these wheel weights in here? See them all? See them? Look at them all. Uh, why would you put silver wheel weights on a black rim? I mean, really. Why would you do that? Here are the wheel weights on this car, on the other side. This is, what, this is what came from the factory. They were almost black. They're very hard to see, very unobtrusive. But when you go back over here, this looks like crap, I think. Let me know what you think. Do you think it looks like crap? Or do you think I'm too much, too picky? and too much of a, uh, a whiner about it. I don't know. I think it looks like crap, but let me know what you think. The last thing I want to talk about today is being able to tune the C8 Corvette. We've been tuning cars off and on for over 20 years. Corvettes for over 20 years. Now, all of a sudden, with the C8, you can't tune it. You, there's no way you're going to break that code, from what I'm told. Some of the smartest people I know, they're not even close. It's, it's kind of taking the fun out of it. I mean, not that everybody wants to tune their car, but the fact that the ability or the capability was always there is now gone. They've taken it away. It's almost like what's going on in the country today where they're trying to make you do stuff you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do the other thing. It's almost like everybody's trying to control your damn life. If I want to tune my cab, I should be able to tune it. And I know what the consequences are that my warranty goes out the window. But I, why can't I have that? Why can't I make that decision? Why is General Motors telling us you can't touch. We've got it so locked up now, you can't get anywhere near that computer. You can't even do a little simple tune. You can't do anything. Why? I can buy a Mustang, and I can tune the crap out of it, superchargers, turbochargers, you name it, whatever you want to do and throw on it. Yeah, and it's your, it's your, you're on your dime now, because if, you know, if you break something, there's, the warranty isn't going to cover it. But, but what I'm saying is, don't take... Don't take the option away from me. What good, what good is it to take the option away from me? You know that, and they know, and everybody knows if you go and, you know, you do something to the car, you add something, you tune the car, let's say, that you're going to go out of warranty. But I want to have that option. And now all of a sudden, for some reason or other, they've taken that option away from us, and I personally don't like it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Should you be able to tune that car or not? Put your comments. Let's, let's hear it. Let's hear what you, what you people are thinking. Thanks for watching.